Hello to everyone watching this video. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about cosmic superhighways. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, is it just hype uh, in certain scientific articles or does it really exist? Is there actual scientific backing uh, to prove the existence of these cosmic superhighways? Um, and I can tell you right now that the answer is both. Uh, there is a lot of misconceptions about uh, cosmic superhighways uh, as a whole. Um, and I'm also going to be talking to you guys about how we are going to use cosmic superhighways in the future, um, looking at things such as space, space, space exploration, uh, as well as just looking at cosmic entities uh, as a whole. So there have been a lot of uh, certain scientific articles, a lot of scientific news stories. Uh, I've even seen a lot of Instagram posts about uh, these things referencing cosmic superhighways. Um, and some actually even reference, uh, some articles say, these channels enable the fast travel of objects through space and could be harnessed for our own space exploration purposes, as well as the study of comets and asteroids. Um, and this is completely uh, not wrong. Um, technically, these cosmic superhighways can be used for these purposes, um, but there is a lot of confusion about what uh, they actually are and how they actually work. Um, so one thing that I just want to touch on is uh, what a gravity assist is. So a gravity assist is defined on um, NASA's site as a sort of uh, flyby technique uh, that can add or subtract momentum to increase or decrease the energy of a spacecraft's orbit. And they say generally it has been used in solar orbit to increase a space spacecraft's velocity and propel it outward in the solar system much further away from the sun than its launch vehicle would have been capable of doing. Um, this flyby gravity assist technique has been used by things such as uh, Voyager 1 as well as Voyager 2 uh, and thing, projects such as Galileo as well as Cassini. Um, so these things aren't new at all uh, to the science world. These things have been well known for a while um, and it just so happens to be that these different paths that uh, are actually taken by using this gravity assist uh, technique are dubbed cosmic superhighways. And so that's sort of where the misconception starts. Uh, a lot of people, when they imagine a uh, cosmic superhighway, they imagine these flying cars in space or rockets just uh, traveling interplanetary um, just within, uh, within a year or so. Um, and that's completely not what it is. Um, what, what cosmic superhighways are is basically a, um, the most appropriate path for these different uh, spacecraft and different uh, cosmic objects to go through uh, while they're in space. So that being said, um, these things have been around for a very long time. So what's the hype about? Why are people tr uh, starting to talk about them again? Why are they being brought back up uh, in, in discussions about space exploration and about um, just expanding the knowledge of space overall? Um, and the answer is we have uh, done many different research projects as well as uh, looking at things from a natural standpoint. So rather than saying, um, how can we get our rockets uh, through these different cosmic highways that we have uh, found to be the most efficient, we've actually looked at things called Jupiter Family of Comets or JFCs. Um, so these JFCs are uh, taking place by Jupiter as well as Neptune, um, and they are defined as comets with an orbital period of less than 20 years and are impacted by the gravi gravitational influence of Jupiter. Um, and so these are uh, things that are just kind of passing by, um, things that happen to come in contact with our solar system. Um, and these are actually fantastic things to study. These are fantastic things to see the interaction between how these, uh, this, these different planets' gravitational pull uh, impacts these comets flying by. And so what um, different researchers did is they actually used different simulations as well as physical observations of the comets themselves. Uh, going through this certain space and how they go through and interact um, with the actual gravitational pull of Jupiter. So through these different uh, simulations and through this different research, what scientists have found is actually um, what they describe as a short-lived dynamical gateway um, that is located exterior to Jupiter through which the majority of JFCs pass. And so they, um, again, through observation of these different comets through this interaction uh, with Jupiter itself, um, they've actually revealed that there is a majority of them going through a main path, if you will, 
um, around the actual planet uh, and kind of taking these, uh, using this gravity to kind of take an orbit for this uh, 20 years, again, uh, in this Jupiter family of comets. And so they study these and they say, our dynamical models reveal that the mass majority of objects, 77%, in this gateway region will become or already have been JFCs. And the majority of JFCs, 66 to 72%, depending on fading, pass through this gateway. And so now we know uh, the natural path, the majority of JFCs go through this actual um, dynamical gateway that they are describing. But what does this mean for us and, and how does it connect to cosmic highways at all? We have found sort of uh, an on-ramp, if you will, to these cosmic highways. And so since we have found that uh, these different JFCs uh, just naturally fall into this certain area uh, outside of Jupiter that uses, uh, of course, naturally less energy, uh, uses gravity to its advantage instead of um, different propulsion techni techniques. Obviously, this is how we're going to use it. Um, we can look at where the GFCs go and we can follow that path to uh, lead to more using more energy and more re resources as efficiently as possible. Uh, using gravity instead of propulsion. And when we do use propulsion, we can actually work with gravity itself. Um, and this is going to be a big step in understanding uh, how we're gonna move forward in space travel, as well as understanding uh, aerodynamics, uh, working with these, uh, different, this, these different areas that JFCs happen to be going through. Because after all, uh, the more we observe natural processes, the more we will be able to actually work with and uh, understand them. And I, so, and I think that even with interplanetary travel, um, looking at these different JFCs, if, if there is also a pattern, uh, for example, on other planets where uh, these, these different comets and these different passerby cosmic objects uh, happen to be going, they can, uh, we, we can actually look at that and model how we are going to travel between the planets. Because if we look at the natural processes, um, I mean, we, we have modeled a lot of what we do uh, after nature, just mechanically uh, and with engineering. And so this is another thing, once again, that we can look at to actually use these paths, these uh, cosmic superhighways to our advantage, uh, now that we, again, have found an on-ramp uh, to these different highways. So while the, the term cosmic superhighways isn't an entirely new idea, um, we are learning more and more every single day about uh, the cosmic world and about interplanetary travel um, that we can use and we can find more about how we are going to actually, uh, we as human beings are going to fit into these different stories and these different interactions um, with gravity between these, uh, these JFCs as well as Jupiter um, and all over in our solar system and all over in our uh, universe. And so I hope you have a better understanding on uh, what cosmic superhighways actually are and um, why they're being talked about again. Um, and I would encourage you to do your own research. I linked a lot of the articles as well as the scientific studies that, uh, I, that I used to make this video in the description below. And so I would encourage you to look at a lot of the graphs that they used. Uh, I would encourage you to look at things um, such, as, such as language points, uh, as well as looking at things such as orbital eccentricity. Um, these are things that have to do with why these JFCs are actually going through these certain locations um, and how we can use them to our advantage. Um, so I have to thank you all for watching this video. And again, I hope you uh, leave this video learning more and knowing more um, about interplanetary travel as well as cosmic superhighways. And peace out. Thank you.